friends here we are going to start the first chapter of our syllabus that first chapter is the introduction to microeconomics and macroeconomics see in this chapter we are going to discuss the different definitions of microeconomics as well as the macroeconomics later on we are going to discuss the historical review of micro as well as macroeconomics and we are also going to discuss the subject matter scope and subject matter of micro as well as macroeconomics features and importance of both branches of the economics that is micro and macroeconomics and finally we will make the comparison between both of these so here we are going to start the first chapter that is the introduction of microeconomics and macroeconomics see these are the two different branches of economics micro and macroeconomics the words micro and macro were first introduced by norwegian economist ragnar frisch he is he was from oslo university and he coined these two terms first of all in 1930 3 before 1933 the micro economic concepts as well as macro economic concepts both were being studied under one roof micro and macro asha doni prakar cha concepts ekach chhata khali economics navani tya kay kela jat hotya abhyasla jat hotya but ragnar frisch divided economics into the two different branches the branch of economics which is dealing with the individual parts of the economics economic system he named it as a microeconomics and he gave name macroeconomics to the branch which is dealing with the macroeconomic variables which is dealing with the large economic units of the economic system in such a way he gave these two terms see how the word micro is derived in english the word micro is derived in english from the greek word that is micros m i k r o s micros which means small or a millionth part millionth part means very very small part the term macro is derived from the greek word macros which means large big so in such a way the branch of economics which deals with the individual economic units or small economic units that is called microeconomics and the branch of economics which is dealing with the large economic units that is called as a macro economics so both the words micro and macro in english are derived from the greek words micro is derived from micros which means small and macro is derived from macros which means large or big and who coined these two terms first of all professor ragnar frisch in which year 1933 so these are the two different branches microeconomics and macroeconomics see this historical review of microeconomics <coughs> microeconomics the microeconomic analysis was developed first it means it is developed before the macroeconomic analysis it is a traditional approach which is the traditional approach micro or macro microeconomics is a traditional approach 
the origin of this approach can be traced back to the era of classical economists adam smith david ricardo j s mill these are the classical economists there are three different kinds of economists classical economists neoclassical economists and modern economists each type of economics have a different different views towards the economic activities towards the economic concepts so here who developed micro economic analysis properly the neoclassical economist professor alfred marshall is known as a real architect of micro economic analysis he popularized it and he developed it he popularized it in his book principles of economics which he published in 1890 which book he published in 1890 principles of economics in which he used micro economic analysis and the other economists who have contributed to the development of micro economic analysis are j r hicks samuelson john robinson these have also contributed to the development of micro economics so this is the historical review of micro economics here the historical review of macro economics is also shown see macro economics did exist in the past before the evolution of micro economics micro economics cha aadhi sudha macro economics astitvat hota in the 16th and 17th century the followers of mercantilists mercantilist means a group of english merchant so the policies advocated by these mercantilists to the government in 16th and 17th century were based on macro economic approach so this is showing us that the macro economics was in existence even before the evolution of micro economics so this is a great evidence here we have that proves that the macro economic approach was in existence even before the micro economic analysis in the 18th century french thinkers tried to analyze the concept of national income and national wealth we have another evidence that proves that the macro economic approach was in existence even before the evolution of micro economics what is that evidence the 18th century physiocrats physiocrats means the french thinkers the physiocrats in 18th century century tried to analyze the concepts of national income and national wealth national income national wealth national output these are the macroeconomic concepts and the french thinkers tried to analyze these concept in 18th century so this is what this shows that the macroeconomics was in existence even in the 18th century see even the classical economic theories of professor adam smith professor ricardo professor j s mill discussed the determination of national income and national wealth adam smith also discussed the determination of national income and national wealth adam smith ne jo book lila त्या बुकचं नावच होतं वेल्थ ऑफ नेशन वेल्थ ऑफ नेशन वेल्थ ऑफ नेशन इज अ मॅक्रो इकॉनॉमिक कन्सेप्ट 
so here these all things showing us that the macroeconomic approach is also the oldest economic approach used in economics okay but who popularized and who developed the macroeconomic approach microeconomic analysis ruled the world of economics till the great depression of 1930s till the great depression of 1930s which branch of economics ruled the world of economics microeconomics but after the great depression what happened microeconomics microeconomic analysis or macro microeconomic approach failed to analyze the causes of economic depression arrived in 1930 it failed to explain the causes of great depression of 1930s then what happened lord j m keynes came to the forefront and by using macroeconomic approach he analyzed the causes and effects of the great depression which we are arriving frequently in the developed developed countries like us uk before the 1930s so he developed the he uh, explained the causes effects and the measures for controlling economic depression in his book the general theory of employment interest and money which he published in 1936 in that book he used macroeconomic approach so the credit of developing the macroeconomic approach properly goes to prof, uh, lord john menard keynes okay keynes used macroeconomic approach to analyze the economic problems so here the credit of developing macroeconomic approach goes to whom to the lord keynes apart from lord keynes there are many other economists who have contributed to the development of macroeconomic approach and these are malthus wicksell walrus irving fisher these are the some other economists who have developed macroeconomic approach here now we are going to see the definitions of microeconomics see what is mean by microeconomics according to morris dob microeconomics is in fact a microscopic study of the economy it is what it is a microscopic study of the economy microeconomics he atishay sukshma pane arthavyavasthecha abhyas karta manu yala kay matla hai microeconomics is a microscopic study of the economic system in the words of ap learner microeconomics consists of looking at the economy through a microscope microeconomics means what it is like looking at the economy through a microscope janu kai apan microscope madunas baktoy kasha kade economic system kade kasha sathi to see how the millions of cells in the body of economy in the body of economy there are millions of cells which are these cells the individuals or households as a consumers and individuals or firms as a producers producers and consumers are the millions of cells who are working in the econo economic system who are working in the body of economic system so how they are playing their own parts in the economic system to analyze that it is like looking towards the economic system from the मैक्रोस्कोप जणू का अपन सगैं एनालाइज करना मैक्रोस्कोप मधुन बढ़तो है अर्थव्यवस्थेक 
So in the working of the whole economic organism, how they are playing their parts to analyze that, it is like looking at the economy through a microscope. So the individuals and households are working as a consumers and individuals and producers are working as a producer in the economic system. They are dealing with each other. They are buying and selling different kinds of goods and services. They are producing goods and services. They are consuming goods and services. They are determining the prices. So how all these economic activities are being done by these millions of cells in the body of economic system. To analyze that, it is like looking through the microscope towards the economic system. This is according to AP Lerner. So in such a way, here we can say, say that microeconomics is that branch of economics which deals with the individual economic units such as individual consumer, individual producer, individual firms, industries, individual prices, individual wages, incomes. All these individual economic units are the part of the microeconomics. See, what is the scope of microeconomics? The scope of microeconomics means what actually studied in the microeconomics? What is the subject matter of microeconomics that we are going to discuss here? The scope of microeconomics is limited as compared to macroeconomics because of macro deals with the behavior of entire economic system. But here micro deals with the particular part of the economic system. See, which is the subject matter of microeconomics? Microeconomics deals with the theories of product pricing. Theory of product pricing means what? The theory of product pricing analyzes how prices of individual commodities are determined in the market. The prices of mobile phones, prices of laptops, prices of notebooks, prices of pens, prices of bags, television sets, television set, computer, laptop, mobile phones, these are the particular commodities. And how their prices are determined? The prices of onion, prices of tomato, prices of different kind of fruits, how their prices are determined in the market that is analyzed in theory of product pricing. See, the prices of any kind of goods and services are determined by the market forces. Which are these market forces? Demand and supply. Demand and supply. Who makes the demand? Consumer makes the demand. And who makes the supply? The producer makes the supply. So here we are dealing with the demand means we are dealing with the behavior of consumer. And we are dealing with supply means we are dealing with the behavior of a producer. So here while analyzing how prices are determined, we have to make the analysis of consumer's behavior and producer's behavior because of they these are the important market forces which are playing important role in the determination of prices of goods and services so hence the demand analysis and the uh, supply analysis or the analysis of consumer's behavior and analysis of producer's behavior that becomes the part and parcel of the study of microeconomics. Second one, theory of factor pricing. The theory of factor pricing, it is also an important part of the subject matter of microeconomics. There are four different factors of production, which are these land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. These are the four factors of production. If you want to produce any commodity, it requires the use of land, capital, 
labor and entrepreneurial services. Without these four factors, we cannot produce anything else. For using land, the landowner gets reward in the form of rent. For using labor, the laborer gets reward in the form of wages. When we are using capital, the capital owner gets reward in the form of interest and when we are using entrepreneurial services that time the entrepreneur gets reward in the form of profit so how the rent wages interest and profits these rent wages interest and profits are the prices of factors these are the factors of production and their prices rent wages interest and profit these are their prices so how their prices how the rent of land how the wages of labor how the interest of capital and how the profit of an entrepreneur is determined that too an important subject matter of microeconomics and hence and therefore the microeconomic analysis is known as price theory why it is known as a price theory because of determination of prices of products and determination of prices of factors that is the core subject matter of microeconomics hence micro is known as a price theory next one the important subject matter of microeconomics that is the theory of economic welfare the theory of economic welfare basically deals with the efficiency in the allocation of resources efficiency in the allocation of resources is attained when it results in maximization of satisfaction of the people economic efficiency involves three efficiencies efficiency in production efficiency in consumption and overall economic efficiency see what is mean by economic welfare what is mean by theory of economic welfare the theory of economic welfare deals with efficiency in the allocation of resources allocation of resources is very important a proper allocation of resources resources are limited land labor capital and entrepreneurial services these are the four factors of production these we have limited their quantity is limited but human wants are unlimited these are used for various goods and for the production of various goods and services so how these limited resources should be allocated among the different different uses that is the big problem that is the big economic problem and how it is solved that is studied under the theories of economic welfare which is the important part of microeconomic analysis the <coughs> efficient allocation of the resources depends upon three different efficiencies which are these three different efficiencies when these three different efficiencies are achieved then we can achieve the economic welfare then we can maximize the economic welfare which are these three efficiencies efficiency in production see what is meant by efficiency in production efficiency in production means producing maximum possible amount of goods and services from the given amount of resources with the given limited amount of land labor and capital we should try to produce maximum amount of goods and services then it is known as a efficiency in production kami kami साधनांचा वापर करून जास्तीत जास्त उत्पादन घेणं याला म्हणतो आपण इफिशियन्सी इन प्रोडक्शन सेकंड वन इफिशियन्सी इन कन्झम्पशन इफिशियन्सी इन कन्झम्पशन मीन्स डिस्ट्रीब्युशन ऑफ गुड्स अँड सर्व्हिसेस अमंग द पीपल फॉर कन्झम्पशन इन सच अ वे टू मॅक्झिमाइज टोटल सॅटिस्फॅक्शन ऑफ द सोसायटी आपण प्रोड्यूस केलेल्या गुड्स अँड सर्व्हिसेस तर डिस्ट्रीब्युशन अशा पद्धतीनं केलं पाहिजे की जेणेकरून टोटल मॅक्झिमम लोकांच्या जास्तीत जास्त गरजा पूर्ण झाल्या पाहिजेत मॅक्झिमम सोशल सॉरी 
मैक्सिमम टोटल सैटिस्फैक्शन है मैक्सिमाइज करता आला पाजे सोसायटीच मैक्सिमाइज करता आला पाजे अशा पद्धति सी द सेकेंड इफिशियंसी इफिशियंसी इन कंजम्शन इफिशियंसी इन कंजम्शन मीन्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ प्रोड्यूस्ड गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस अमंग द पीपल फॉर कंजम्शन इन सच अ वे एज टू मैक्सिमाइज टोटल सैटिस्फैक्शन ऑफ द सोसायटी वी शूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूट द गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस अमंग द पीपल इन सच अ वे सो दैट इट विल रिजल्ट इन मैक्सिमाइजेशन ऑफ द टोटल सैटिस्फैक्शन ऑफ द सोसायटी एंड द थर्ड वन इज ओवरऑल इकोनॉमिक इफिशियंसी इट मीन्स द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ दोज गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस विच आर मोस्ट डिजायर्ड बाय द पीपल हेयर ओवरऑल इकोनॉमिक इफिशियंसी इज एचीव्ड वेन वी प्रोड्यूस मोस्टली दोज गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस विच आर रिक्वायर्ड बाय द पीपल विच आर मोस्टली डिजायर्ड बाय द पीपल अशाच वस्तूं प्रोडक्शन करने ज्या कि लोकान आवश्यक है अनावश्यक वस्तूं प्रोडक्शन न करने मैक्सिम टाइम का होता प्रोड्यूसर्स लोक को प्रोडक्शन करता नेसेसरी गुड्सच प्रोडक्शन करता का नहीं लग्जरियस एंड कम्फर्ट गुड्सच प्रोडक्शन करता ज्याची की जास्तीत जास्त लोकांना आवश्यकता नाही आहे कमीत कमी लोकांना आवश्यकता आहे मुठभर लोकांना त्याची आवश्यकता आहे श्रीमंत लोकांना त्याची आवश्यकता आहे त्याचं ते प्रोडक्शन करायला लागले का प्रोडक्शन करायला लागले त्यांना त्याच्यामध्ये मिळणारा प्रॉफिट जास्त आहे म्हणून ते लक्झरियस अँड कम्फर्ट गुड्सचं प्रोडक्शन करतात प्रोडक्शन झालं पाहिजे कशाचं प्रोडक्शन झालं पाहिजे नेसेसरी गुड्सचं बिकॉज ऑफ देर इज अ शॉर्टेज ऑफ नेसेसरी गुड्स सो वी शूड फोकस ऑन प्रोड्युसिंग नेसेसरी गुड्स रॅदर दॅन प्रोड्युसिंग द लक्झरियस ॲटम्स दॅन we can achieve the overall economic efficiency then we can achieve the economic welfare so how these efficiencies can be achieved that is studied in micro economics so here the micro economics mainly confined to the price theory and the resource allocation it does not study the aggregates relating to the whole economy it doesn't deals with the determination of national income it doesn't deal with the determination of national employment it does not focus on the study of investment it doesn't focus on the study of aggregate consumption aggregate demand or any other macro economic variables so the subject matter of micro economics is product pricing factor pricing and the theory of economic welfare this is showing that the scope of micro economics is very limited so here we have discussed its definitions as well as the scope and subject matter of micro economics here the question on the subject matter of micro economics is asked for four marks char marks cha yacha varti question aplyala vicharla jau shakto explain the scope and subject matter of micro economics tar he teen points ani he teen efficiencies tumhala tyachyamade explain karavya lagtil in the next session we will have discussion on features of micro economics till then goodbye